don't know what you're thinking. Jack, where's the intro? Where's the green screen? Look, it's a big game today. Serious game today. No, no more messing around. Serious mode is on. It's the Copa del Rey. We've got La Liga opposition. And I'm a little bit nervous. Hello and welcome back. We are here. You know what's going on by now. It's part two Primera, episode number four here with Racing. As I've already alluded to today, I said last episode was our first proper test. This is like our p first proper, proper test. We're taking on a team from La Liga and that team, it's the Batman team. It's Valencia. Um, they're very good, aren't they? They've got some pretty good players compared to our team. Maxi Gomez up front. I mean, I don't want to, you know, turn this into a, a measuring contest of any kind, but let's just compare him with Foster. Uh, yeah, mm. slight golfing class between the two teams going into today's game. This... Might be a great idea for a commentary. It might get ugly really quickly. Just one little thing before we get into today's video. If this video hits 2,000 likes, tomorrow's episode, double header, two matches for the price of one. You know you want it. I kind of secretly want it. Leave a like. Let's get into the rest of this. Anyway, since you were last here, we've played through six matches in the league. We've also had a winter break and January has come. So I'm trying to get some early little bits of transfer business done. Before we talk about that though, we should talk about the stuff that's happened since you were last here. Firstly, we've not had a takeover, but our finances are listed as insecure. Yeah, that's not ideal, although I kind of knew this was going to be the scenario. Uh, the wage budget has not been cut down massively yet, although as we've started to renew player contracts, many of them are taking pay cuts willingly, which, I mean, it might help us out slightly, but of course the big expenditure isn't the wages at all. It's just this massive debt that we've got to pay off. And it's a little bit of a sobering thought when you realise that actually, you know, current financial predicament doesn't look great. We've only paid off 12% of the debt that we have to pay off for the next three years. Oh my, it's going to be tricky. Outside of the money worries though, as I already said, we've played six matches since you were last here. Five wins, uh, four of them in the league, one in the cup actually. I said we've played six league games, that's just not true. We've played five league games and a cup game. Let's talk about the one game that we didn't win in the league and it was against Amoretta. It finished 1-1. They had one shot on target and it went in. This is becoming a bit of a common theme where we have games that we dominate and we just don't score enough and then we give them one opportunity. To be fair, in the grand scheme of BS goals, that was actually quite a nice one. So fair play to them, but something that I definitely want to address is the fact that in games like this one where things aren't quite going to plan, I don't really have an alternative striker to Capani at the moment. Beyond that draw, though, we've looked very, very good. Wins against the likes of Laredo, Leoa, and also a win against Harrow in the Copa del Rey first round. Now, interesting thing to note about this opposition in Harrow is the fact that they are the top team in the B group next to us. I've talked about it a few times, but after 20 games this season, we and the B group are going to merge into one. It's very likely that this is going to be a team that we end up taking on in that competition in this game. We look very good. Pablo Torre really ran the show in this game. They were playing a really narrow system, this 4-1-2-1-2 diamond. And of course, as a team that like to stretch the pitch wide, like to knock it around wide, and our pitch, something I've not mentioned, our pitch is set to be the biggest it can be. It's absolutely ginormous. Against teams like this who want to play compact, we cause them issues. A little bit of an embarrassing own goal there, made it 2-0. Um, they actually pegged us back. And because they were top of the group next to us, I was trying to show them a degree of respect, and to be fair, it was a very nice goal that they scored, but we responded very quickly, and at 3-1, it turned into one of those games in Football Manager where we were dominant without scoring a lot. You know, we kind of took our foot off the gas, took things a little easier. Uh, it was nice to see C Cedric get a goal, though. Um, Cedric out on the left wing has definitely been a, a standout player, dare I say. That's not a phrase I thought I'd be saying, but he was very, very good in this game, as was Pablo. And as you can see here, it finished 4-1. He opened the scoring, he closed the scoring. As I mentioned, Cedric's been beyond solid. One of our kind of two fit strikers we've had really since the start of the season. Four goals, six assists in just 12 appearances in the league. That, my friends, is a very good return. So this is how the league table looks after those results. We look really, really good, as you can see here. Still unbeaten, but, and it's a big but, I can't take this for granted. Of course, after we play the teams in our group twice, uh, we're going to go into a group, hopefully, with the top three teams in Group B, assuming we stay in the top three, which at this point seems likely. And then the top three teams from that merged group of six 
go into two rounds of playoffs. So we can walk the league right now. We will still have to win two playoff games at the end of all of this. So let's not get complacent just yet. Worth noting as well, in terms of player stats, uh, you can see here Kapani is up in second in the goal scoring charts with nine. In terms of average ratings, we are dominating it. Ricky's up there, of course, he got a hat trick in our last episode. Matic and Gil at centre back also looking really, really good. It's also nice to see Emmanuel Gabua just sneaking in at the bottom alongside Pablo Torre. I, I, I go on about this guy every episode. Just want to remind you he exists. Daily reminder he's here, he's still blooming good. In today's Lolo update, because I feel like at this point we just know him a little section of the video where we tell you how he's doing. He's now playing for the Brazil national team at under 20s level. He's never played for another football team before. According to some of the comments, apparently he plays for maybe Real Betis or Sevilla in real life. In this save game, he doesn't play for anyone, but we've signed him. He looks very good. I'll, I'll keep you posted if I have any more revelations about him. Now, it's worth noting that because we're now in January, any players with six months left of their contracts can start to move elsewhere. And with that in mind, I've got a few decisions to make on contracts to possibly renew. Of course, the, the added caveat to all of this is I don't actually have the ability to give anyone a pay rise. So there are players who I'm becoming kind of aware of at this point, I'm ultimately going to end up losing. If we just sort by players' salaries, you can see here, players like Lars Gerson, I can't afford to pay him £5,000 a week. Now, he has offered to renew at a reduced cost of about £4,700, which I can afford, but he wants a three-year contract. And to be honest, he's not that good. He's not that. He's not impressed me so far. He buggers off an international duty, and I've already got a possible replacement lined up. Another one of the significant first-team players who is looking to possibly force a move is Pablo Andrade. He's actually had a few offers from Brazil. They've not been for a lot of money, kind of £20,000, and because of that, I'd rather hold him to the end of the year. He's only one of two left-backs we have in the team, but the full-back area is already part of the pitch that I'm looking at, thinking we're going to need to make some moves there for next year, and with that in mind... I might have found a player, Francis. Now, he, we actually had him on trial at the club for a little while and he was injured at the time. And I probably should have known he'd be listed as injury prone, really, because he'd missed the kind of entirety of the start of the year with torn knee ligaments. But when you look at him, he's a really, really good fullback. Naturally plays on the right, but we could easily train him to play on the left. Given all the issues we've had with injuries, it might seem foolish to be looking at another injury prone player to add to the team but his quality is really good. And the kind of wages he's asking for, £1.3,000 a week, is just so much lower than the vast majority of our first team that it just kind of feels like a too good or an opportunity to miss, I suppose. I can't not sign him because he's injury prone because he offers so much in the way of value for money. Of course, if he now goes on to get like a long-term injury, I'm going to look like an idiot. And that statement that I just said, not true. Another player that I'm looking to pick up is Carlo Fernandez. Of course, we've had Foster out for a lot of the year with an injury uh, and we only have three fit strikers in the team. And normally two of those are starting. I kind of need a fourth striker, I feel like. And I've got Carlos Fernandez here, who I think might be the man for me. He's super well-rounded. He's kind of the jack of all trades, master of some, master of none. Probably none. Uh, he's not got anything yellow. Just lots of blues. His physicals are really well-rounded. He's a player who's played a lot at this level over the years. He's been a free agent for the last six months. As a result, he's willing to sign for relatively cheap wages. I'll be honest, his goal-scoring record ain't all that. But he, he looks serviceable. And in terms of as a backup striker in a position we've desperately been lacking, I think he could be the one. Now, I know what you're thinking, Jack. Barcelona, great affiliate. Surely they have some players you can loan. Genuinely, and I don't know if this is a bug, maybe I'm just a noob, Barcelona are not willing to let any of their players come on loan to me. I've gone through their entire first team. The B team I don't think we technically have an affiliation with, so I can't loan players from them. But if I, I, I mean, I'm going to go through a few of these to em emphasize the point. They're just not willing to let anyone join us on loan at this time. I don't know why. I don't know what's wrong with us. Maybe, maybe they just don't like me after six months. Basically, this well of talent that I thought I was going to be able to haul water out of and drink on to help us up through the leagues. Uh, that well is dry. It doesn't exist. There's no water in it. They're not giving me anything. I think they're leaving me out in the desert to die, Barcelona. I don't really appreciate it. 
Anyway, that's a little bit about what's been going on at the club over the last two months. Of course, the transfer window is open. We may look to do a bit more business, but we have got that big restriction on the fact that the squad registration rules mean we can only actually register 22 players. So if I bring anyone in, I'm going to have to look to move other players on, which could be a little bit of a challenge. In terms of team news for today's game, Foster is the only player not available, although because in the Copa del Rey, I can have 12 players on the bench. I'm just going to name him on the bench for kind of a, a psychological edge. You know, like in the Champions League final where teams, because they have the big bench, just put players on it who aren't actually fit. You know, a bit of an intimidation factor. I'm doing that with Foster, although... I'm not sure if Valencia are actually going to feel all that intimidated by him. With the team that we're going to play for this home match, it's going to be the 4 2 3 1. I want to see how this style of football fares against a better opposition. I'm kind of hoping Valencia aren't going to play a full strength 11. Maybe they're going to look to underestimate us slightly. But I do feel like this game, at the very least, will give me a little bit of an indication of the fact that if we get promoted next year or this year into the, you know, the second tier of Spain. Is this the kind of system that can actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with opposition of better teams? Or given the fact that next year, again, assuming we're going to be promoted, please, football manager, is this system going to work, basically? That's what I need to learn. Because I feel like even if we get promoted, we are going to have a big challenge with the fact I'm not going to be able to strengthen the team massively with the current kind of financial predicament going on. Anyway, in terms of the team for today's game, we've got Crespo in goal. Tried to offer him a new contract. He is our captain, of course. He's asking for a pay rise. I can't give you a pay rise, Ivan. You're going to have to learn your place in this universe. You, my friend, you're not as good as you think you are. Gerson's going to play at right back. Heel and Matic at centre back. Lopez is fit. This hasn't happened too often this year. He's only played four games in all competitions. He's constantly got injured with kind of these four to three week long injuries. Hopefully he's going to stay fit today. Gyabua is back in the team alongside the hero of our last episode in Ricky. Cedric out on the left. Ten goal contributions in 12. I need him to be good today. Torre in the middle. Sehudo is playing out on the right. And Kapani, who remains our top goal scorer, remains kind of the, the focal point of this team. The arrowhead of our spear. Uh, he's got 9 in 10. Hopefully he's going to get some goals today. Okay, I've gone into the game. I think I found a bug. So in this competition, I can have 12 players on the bench and 11 in the starting 11, right? That makes sense. But the league rules say that I can only have players numbered between 1 and 22. There's 23 players in my squad today. Uh, I can't give Foster a number. Football man, please. Sports Interactive, please fix. Right, I'm going to have to save Scum. I'm sorry, everyone. I failed you. Right, so I've learnt my lesson here. We're going to remove Foster from the team, and then when I submit the squad, he's not going to need a number. No one else is going to need a number. It's going to be fine. The team is already set up, so no problems there. I will say now, if there is a way to get round what just happened to me, please let me know it. I'm sure there's a way out of it. I'm just, I'm just too lazy. Save scumming is easier. Right, let's get into this game. It's Valencia v Racing. We're at home. I didn't realise this, but in the Copa del Rey, the kind of lower seeded team, I think, always gets drawn at home. That's really neat. That should be a thing in the FA Cup. I say that. In England, ticket money from big away days in the FA Cup is nice. Uh... They've just scored through Radcic, but it's been disallowed. It all, it's also dawned on me. I was hoping that they were going to rotate their team. Their key man, Gaia, is on free kicks. So, uh, is, is, is Maxi, Maxi Lope Gomez is playing. It's not very... They're trying their hardest. You were meant to be kind to me. Right, Ricky, you might have to score a banger here. Oh, my word. Say, Hudo, you've got to. Rebound, it's blocked. It's cleared away. That was a really good chance. Also, what is this? Sorry, pause the game. We are the underdog here. They've got Catrone and Maxi Gomez up front. They've got like a full strength 11 they're playing here. And they're playing with two defensive midfielders. Are, are we that scary? Are we? I feel like, you know, you see those videos of cats, like scaring giant dogs. I feel like we're the little kitten now scaring a giant dog. Although maybe we've got a bite on us. Maybe, maybe we can inflict some damage. Cedric, Kipani, just the wrong side of the post. 20 minutes gone. We're having shots. We're having chances. We look up for it. Crespo goal kick to Oscar Heel. What can we do here, Oscar? Playing it out from the back. Pablo to Gibua. I love saying his name. It's a fun name to say, say Gibua. I've said it wrong there. That's ironic. Capani, finish this. Please finish this. Sillison stops it with his foot. 
I mean, we're giving them a blooming good game right now, although I do feel like their system is very much inviting pressure onto them. But that's, I mean, if they want to play it, they can play it. I realise that going into this game, probably should have checked what happens in the event of a draw. You know, managing in a nation I don't really often manage in, I don't know the cup rules of the Copa del Rey. It could be a two-legged affair for all I know, and I've just not checked it. Musa for them, out on the right-hand side there. American international, who could, who could have played for England, but then he decided... America was better. It's just not fair. Lee Kang in. Shot blocked. Falls to Gaia. Left back. Plays in. Catrone. I mean, of all the goals to concede, that one is annoying, isn't it? It's a shot that I think is blocked, and then it just P-rolls into the bottom corner. It's a grass cutter. I mean, they are playing super narrow, playing it through the middle. That effort was blocked. Cross is put in. It's cleared away, and... I mean, could Crespo have got down to that? I know he's 35 years old in goal. He's probably worried about bending down and hurting his back. I feel like he could have done more there to stop that going in the back of the net. I'm going to tell the players I'm far, far from pleased because I know they'll react well to me saying that. What I will say now in my head, aka to you guys, is that's a pretty good first half by all accounts. We had chances. We had shots. We looked kind of threatening. And, uh, well, look, it's still only 1-0. There, there is time for a fight back. I really, I've not hit the, sh the man more button yet. I've not hit the another highlight please button yet. Let's hit it now. I might have hit it too late. I'm demanding a highlight, but they're on the attack. Gamero, I mean Crespo. I think I should hit him in the stomach. He might be a bit winded in goal, but it's gone out for a corner. This is fine. They're making subs. Maybe I should make subs. There's 11 of them on the bench. You know what? Let's do one now. Um, Torre has not had a good game, but I'm going to keep my faith in him. Cedric and Sehudo have been a bit poor. I'm going to bring in Bustos on the left and Traver on the right. Let's get a little bit of an injection of pace. 14 acceleration, 13 pace on one wing. Bustos, 11 acceleration on the other. Okay, Bustos isn't as quick as I thought he was, but fresh legs in the wide area. And I, I should have taken. I should have taken off Torre. I should have. I've not the microphone. I, my star young player is injured. I've lost my head. Why didn't I take him off? Why did I show favoritism? Um, right, Ricky, centre attack in mid, and then we're going to bring in Inigo to play box to, well, ball winning midfielder, and then Yabua is going to go to box to box. Ricky, can you play as an advanced playmaker? 12 passing, for, he'll make it work. 12 passing, 14 vision. For our team, that makes him a star playmaker. 15 minutes left. I hope that's not a bad injury. I hope, that, I hope that's not a bad injury for Torre. I can't deal with more injuries. I was really happy that all the injuries had kind of cleared up for the most part. And, you know, Foster was going to be back soon. If Torre's now out for a long time, there may be tears. Lopez on the near side for us. Eight minutes left. We need a goal. Bustos, back out to Lopez. We've made three subs, three attacking mids in. And while we're looking to make something happen, Capani's shot is cleared off the line. Capani, you could have just put it in the other corner, lad. I've left this a bit late. I haven't had to go a lot more attacking. But look, don't, don't blame me. I was I was just panicking. In transition, just, just lump it over the top now. We've got five minutes to try and get a highlight. Go very attacking for the last moment. Nothing, nothing ever happens when you go very attacking, does it? No, nothing ever happens. I mean, it's a very average game by our team's kind of own performance. They played quite well, to be fair to them. We went total... We caused them problems, but... If you were hoping for a deep Copa del Rey run, it's ended quite early here. This is our first defeat as manager, and I feel like, in a weird way, 1-0 against Valencia ain't that bad. Uh, Torre, injury worry. That makes me worry. How bad is it? How bad is it? It's bad. It's it's bad. It's bad. Try not to cry. Try, try not to cry, Jack. It's going to be okay. I mean, five weeks. I mean, he might be back after the split where we play, you know, all the top teams again. That's probably when I need him back. I guess what's more concerning is I don't really have a natural replacement. I guess Cejudo is going to be back in the middle. Oh, Torre. I mean, I was delighted with 1-0. 1-0 was a good performance. It was a good team display. I was going to show some optimism off the back of that. And then this happens. So in terms of when we're going to be back next time, it will probably be after Pablo's back from injury. I feel like the league first phase is looking pretty good. So with that in mind, once we get into a, a phase where we're playing against some heavy hitters ahead of the playoffs, I think that's a pretty nice time to come back 
and see what we're all about. See how we do against the big dogs. Of course, this season, the league you know, stage is great to dominate, but it doesn't actually mean a great deal. The playoffs are where things matter. The knockouts are where things matter. That Valencia game, though, does give me some hope. I'm just kind of praying that we're not going to end up with too many more injuries. Otherwise, we could be in a little bit of a sticky situation before too long. Right, that is going to wrap up everything from me today. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed today's video, do drop a like on it. I will see you guys again tomorrow. Things are getting serious. The tail end of the season is already quickly approaching. I hope you're ready. I'm not after that injury. I'll see you guys tomorrow.